Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera, and all these mushrooms are going into a cream of mushroom soup. I always try to give you simple recipes using ordinary ingredients that your whole family will enjoy. And written recipes are available to my patrons on Patreon. So let's get started. I'm just gonna get started and talk as I go, starting with a tablespoon of olive oil. And my pot is already heated on high, on saute mode. I've quartered some of my mushrooms. I'm just gonna get started first and I'll let you know the amount. Okay, we're just gonna let it brown without disturbing it. I have one pound of cremini mushrooms and one pound of white button mushrooms and I've just quartered them. And we just want to brown it without disturbing so that it actually browns on the bottom. You don't want the mushrooms to start steaming because then it will start to release its juices and then your mushrooms won't actually brown and you'll have this like liquid at the bottom of your pot that you don't want. This is not your usual cream of mushroom from a can. So I grew up loving cream of mushroom from a can that you can just add milk. I think initially we used to just add water, which was really gross. And then we started adding milk or cream instead and it made it so much more, more better. So much better. So much more luxurious. <laughs> yes, but now that I make cream of mushroom from scratch, oh my goodness, it's like a total game changer. It doesn't take well, it takes way more effort than just opening a can, but it's totally worth it. Okay, just to stir up the mushroom a little bit. And you'll see if it'll brown some more before I remove it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna take it out. I don't know if you can hear that. But it's kind of, it's liquid that's hitting the bottom of the pot. So I'm gonna remove them now. It's been about two to three minutes. All right, I'm gonna add another tablespoon of olive oil. And do the same with the second batch. One more thing about the mushrooms is if you use them right away and they're dry and when you clean them, you're just brushing off the extra dirt that's on them. You're not actually putting them underwater. If they absorb too much liquid, they won't brown properly in the pot. I have an onion, three stalks of celery and a leek. Now leeks, you only wanna use the white and light green parts of the leek and when you're washing them, cut it in half lengthwise. And you have to make sure that you're cleaning in between the layers because that's where all the sand and grit hide. So I've already cleaned them. Just make sure that you run your water th through every layer. Then we're just gonna chop it up. And if you don't have leeks, you can just use another onion or half an onion. You don't have to have the leeks. It just adds a, another layer of flavor. I'm just gonna slice up my onion. We're going to blend it in the end, so it doesn't matter how you want to chop it up. And do the same with the celery, just chop it up. And chop up the leeks. Removing the mushrooms. another tablespoon of olive oil. It's because the mushrooms absorb all of the oil in the bottom of the pan, which is why there's nothing left down here. And we're going to add the onion, celery, and leek. And we're gonna saute that for five to seven minutes. And I have three cloves of garlic. And since I have some time, I'm just going to chop them up roughly. Okay. 
in about five minutes. Just gonna add the garlic and cook this for another 30 seconds until you start to smell the fragrance of the garlic. Adding half a cup of white wine. This is only 375 mils, so it's not a full bottle of wine because I will be adding most of it. You know what, I was only supposed to add half a cup, but I didn't, I added about a whole cup. <laughs> They'll be fine. Here, I'm just scraping the bottom brown bits off from the bottom of the pot, so that's deglazing. And you just wanna cook this for about two minutes so that some of the alcohol can burn off. And a half a cup of wine is gonna make a huge difference. It'll just be more flavorful. Uh. Okay, seasoning with about half a teaspoon of salt. And quarter teaspoon of pepper, or until your arm gets tired. And by the way, this recipe is in my new cookbook, Elevated. I had a friend help test this recipe, and she was amazing. Anyways, her family decided to do a soup competition instead of a traditional turkey Thanksgiving dinner. And she made this soup and it won. Thanks, Allison. And by the way, with all my chatting, I forgot to tell you that I added two bay leaves and I am turning off the saute mode. Throwing in two fresh sprigs of Thyme, and if you don't have fresh, you can just use half a teaspoon of thyme. And the mushrooms are going back in along with any liquids it produced. See, so there is liquid at the bottom, see? And four cups of chicken broth. We are going to close and lock the lid. And I forgot my knob, be right back. Right. Just making sure the ceiling knob is on ceiling and we are going to pressure cook on high for 10 minutes. On to the next part. I'm using oyster mushrooms today. In my recipe, I call for half a pound of wild mushrooms. And these were the ones that I could find. If you can use whatever wild mushrooms you can find, and if you can't find any, just use the button mushrooms. Just make sure that you chop them up into bite-sized pieces because we will be adding this to the pureed soup to give it some texture. And we're gonna roast these in the air fryer, but you can also roast them in the oven. So at 400 degrees, you can roast them in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. And in the air fryer, I'm also going to roast them at 400 degrees and hopefully it'll only take about five to eight minutes. I'm just gonna put them in a mixing bowl so that I can season them and add my olive oil. A pinch of thyme, dry thyme, pinch of kosher salt, freshly ground pepper, a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm just going to stir this up. You just want to roast them until they're golden brown. My mushrooms cook down to nothing. They sure did, they shrunk. <laughs> this was eight minutes in the air fryer. And let's see what the soup looks like. It smells really good. Uh, oh, so you, uh, oh, I quick, quick released. released, yep. Oh, it looks yummy. Do I need to stand back? Like, way back? <laughs> so we're going to blend the soup and if you don't have an immersion blender you can just use a regular blender you'll just have to scoop out the soup and turn it on so you can see that there's still some texture in the soup if you want it smoother than this you might have to use a vitamix in order to get 
to the right consistency, but I don't mind the little chunks in there. I think it adds some texture to the soup. So I'm gonna call it now. Turning saute mode on, and we're going to adjust it to less. Just add another half teaspoon of salt. So I don't think I salted my mushrooms when I was sauteing them, which I should have. And some more pepper. going to add the mushrooms. I'm going to heat that through along with a cup of whipping cream or heavy cream. Give that a stir. You see the bubbles will dissipate. Yeah, so it starts to simmer a little bit. That means it's heated through. I'm going to turn off the saute mode and add a quarter cup of chopped Italian parsley. I prefer the Italian flat leaf parsley to the curly stuff, but if you like the curly stuff, or if that's all you have, feel free to use that. I'm saving a little bit of garnish for each bowl. And I took away my spoon, so I need to stir that in with it later. I'll be right back. I'm just going to stir that in. All right, I know you're all ready for the taste flow. I don't know, I don't have super high hopes for how I'll like the cream of mushroom because my mind goes back to Campbell's cream of mushroom soup in a can. Yeah. And mm, not the greatest memories, dude. Really, I love cream of mushroom from a can. Good for you. The addition of all those levels, the aromatics, the oyster mushrooms, great contrast in terms of texture to the smoothness of the soup. If you didn't have it, it would just be, it wouldn't have any different textures in there. So it was a good addition. A very subtle flavor. I like that. I like it a lot. Really? I'm yeah. actually shocked because you don't even like mushrooms. Because it's like blended the smithereens, maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> this recipe can be found in my new cookbook, once again. And if you don't already, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.